1995 seems to be the year for actor Samuel L. Jackson, nominated for an Academy Award in a high-powered film, and co-starred with Bruce Willis in one of this summer's biggest action flicks. His friends in Atlanta couldn't be happier for this journeyman actor. I caught up with Samuel on the set where he's filming The Great White Hype. He plays a Don King type of character whose costume defines his name, Reverend Fred Sultan. He's a prize-fighting promoter on the Skids who dreams up a comeback match that involves co-star Damon Wayans. Samuel will spend most of the day on two scenes that will last a few minutes on screen. Although he appears loose, he has ways of maintaining his edge. Then I get free cigarettes. Mm. I'm going to tell. Who are you going to tell? A lot of movie firsts have been filmed at these historic studios. And for Samuel, the great white hype is significant too. It marks his first mainstream movie lead. Everybody's buzzing about it just took your name being attached to it that got it bankrolled. No kidding. <laughs> that's amazing. I don't know, that's something new. Hold on to your butts. And until this year, it was. Samuel L. Jackson was the actor who played supporting roles, such as the stand-up computer geek in Jurassic Park. You this remembered his face, but not his name, you. in Kiss of Death, of Patriot Games, History. White no, Sands, Goodfellas, and Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Here I am. Am I here? You know it. It, you know. This is Mr. Senior Love Daddy. Are you all that stuff again? You promise. I, I, I promise, Mama. I'm straight. I'm clean. He worked almost anonymously for years until his breakthrough role as a crack addict in Spike's Jungle Fever. I really hate having to resort to knocking elderly people in the head for their money. But I'll do it. Spike wrote the role specifically for Jackson, and his performance led to a Cannes Film Festival award. Judges were so enamored of his work, they created a Best Supporting Performance category just for him. But this year, Samuel L. Jackson seemed to rise to the top, beginning with his role of Jules in the dark and wildly successful Pulp Fiction. Critics lavished praise, and colleagues nominated him for an Academy Award. Don't you hurt him! Nobody's going to hurt anybody. We're all going to be like three little Fonzies here. And what's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda, what's Fonzie like? Cool. What? Cool. Correct mundo. Get out the damn phone, lady. Police business. And then, when Die Hard with a Vengeance hit movie theaters this spring, the general public was able to put a name with a face that's been around a long time. Samuel L. Jackson's overnight success has taken 25 years. You're the golden brown boy right now because the best supporting actor nomination for the Oscar, and then in Cannes, they created the award for you. Yeah. So, I mean, you're now hot. Yeah, but I'm hot not because of those two things. I'm hot because Die Hard with the Vengeance is making over a hundred million dollars. Uh, and it's a very interesting kind of phenomenon that I feel like I've been good for a while. But when you're in films that open very well and stay open for a while the way Die Hard has stayed open, and you get the kind of reviews that I got for being in that film, even though it's, it's Bruce's film, then all of a sudden I become a lot more viable because um, I have a box office appeal to a wider number of people. And that appeal apparently extends outside the United States. Samuel movie. discovered that and on a recent Die Hard promotional Mr. tour in Japan while talking to a studio box. executive. And I was asking him about black actors in Japan, and he was saying, you know, there are only two black actors that Japanese people know, and that's Eddie Murphy and Sidney Poitier. And I was like, oh. And he and I were walking down the street one day, and all these Japanese women were going, oh, oh, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> and he was totally amazed that they knew who I was. So it's an interesting kind of phenomenon. Particularly when you think back, you were denied a role in Roots because you weren't African looking enough. You were not exotic looking enough, an exotic looking Negro. Exactly. This doesn't make sense. Well, you know, times and everything else change. Um, 
we're beginning to be accepted as a larger kind of minority here in this country and it's becoming acceptable that we actually have a lot of diverse roles in this society and the people are finally realizing that we are this rainbow group of people that look totally different from one another uh, even though you know I still go down the street and people go love your work Mr. Fishburne uh, but uh, <laughs> Hollywood's reflecting what society really is. If Samuel L. Jackson appears philosophical, he can be biased. Just ask him about losing the Oscar this year. He was nominated for Pulp Fiction, but the award went to Martin Landau for Ed Wood. Cameras captured all of the contender's immediate response that night. Look at the top center section of your screen for Samuel's reaction. Martin Landau and Ed Wood. Didn't you say <laughs> the word? <laughs> well, yeah. That was honest. You know, yeah, because I am honest. It was like, you know, now, I'd, I'd, I'd been to every award show this season. I mean, I went to the Golden Globes. I went to the newly uh, established Screen Actors Guild Awards. I went to this award, that award, had dinner, put on my tuxedo. And my lender, I won every award I'd been there. But all of a sudden, something said to me, the law averages just might catch up with this guy. You know, he's won all the little ones, I'll get the big one. I wanted that thing. I wanted it. Okay, honestly, I wanted it. But I can't spend time being angry about not winning it or being disturbed that I think the, the contest wasn't judged fairly or any of that. Because if I spent time worrying about that, that I couldn't work. And work is what he's wanted to do ever since he graduated from Atlanta's Morehouse College with a degree in theater art decades ago. But maybe the draw to acting goes back even further when Samuel's aunt forced him to perform in her plays. It was a screaming, kicking, crying, why are you making me do I don't want to do this. <laughs> and then she's going, come on, you got to try it. You learn these words. And I did it. And I was, oh, man, I did some of everything. And now she takes credit for it, too. Oh, of course she does. And uh, gosh, I was um, Humpty Dumpty. I remember myself in this little egg suit. Uh, I was a uh, sugar plum fairy in the Nutcracker Suite. By the time he was ready for college, Samuel wanted to leave his hometown of Chattanooga and go to school in Nashville. His mother had other ideas. She was like, I don't think so. You're going somewhere else, Morehouse. That's an all-male school, and it's a good Christian school, and you'll get a great education, da 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 Little did she know. <laughs> Atlanta was not the place, you know, and all of a sudden I was in this huge city surrounded by Spellman over here, Clark over here, Morris Brown over there, Atlanta University down the street, and it was like one huge party. But it was also a time of change. 1969 saw Samuel expelled from Morehouse after he and others locked out the Board of Trustees. The students wanted black studies programs at a black college. When Samuel returned a year later, he decided to study drama. He hooked up with a group of others that included his wife, Latanya Richardson, who also is an actress. They played together in Losing Isaiah. Samuel also met actor Bill Nunn. Bill and Samuel played together in Loaded Weapon Number 1 and Do the Right Thing. Sam is like one of my true idols, and I've always looked up to him, and um, he's had a lot to do with my even being an actor, him as well as his wife. Um, Why? Because when I came to school, I didn't, I never even saw a play. And current Atlanta Alliance Theater artistic director Kenny Leon credits Samuel and Latanya with getting him interested in the theater. They were so believable and so real and so funny. I was like, I don't want to hang out with the other college students. I want to hang out with them. I want to be with them. I was in a play. And, and most of the time in the plays, I was Sam's understudy, you know. And uh, Sam really impressed me because Sam, Sam, and your understudy too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but Sam, Sam would learn not only his lines, but every he would know the whole play. He would take a play like in like two days and know the whole play, you know, know your lines too. And I'm like, how does he do that, you know? Because learning lines wasn't a thing; it was the interpretation of lines. So today. Uh, I pass that all on to actors. It, learning lines is easy. It's like, what do you do with uh, the lines? 
After graduation, Samuel and his wife worked in the growing Atlanta theater scene and founded Just Us Theater. And from there, they moved to New York, where he worked in stage plays. You and Latanya have been married 25 years? Well, we've been together 25 years. We've been married 15. You used to write her poetry. Oh, no, I don't want to talk about that. Samuel L. Jackson likes the tough guy role. He's earned a good living playing it and invested a lot of energy living it. Generally, the bad guys have a lot more personality and they have a lot more colors. Are you embarrassed that you wrote your wife poetry? Uh, of course I am. I don't want anybody to know I was that soft. I'll be right back.